have been studying a lot about the dyeing process, the dyeing machine, the various recipes for dyeing and so on and so forth. But one very important factor of the dyed fabric is the assessment of fastness property. So, this lecture is completely dedicated. I have been talking about you know a dye having a good washing fastness or light fastness and we also saw that in the wad dyes they have all the types of fastnesses very good. Sometimes only the rubbing fastness is not so good for a few of the wad dyes. But by and large, the VAD dye category has very good light fastness, wash fastness, perspiration fastness and rubbing fastness. So, what, how do, does one ascertain all this and what goes into the entire process of understanding the fastness properties. So, how do we ascertain? How do we categorize that this dye is good for cotton and this dye is uh, better for silk or wool and so on and so forth. It is on the basis of the as, uh, assessment of the fastness property. So, let us try to understand the fastness property assessment on dyed fabrics. And in order to understand this, let us go one by one looking at the various uh, fastness property machines, how are these machines designed, how do they work, what do they ascertain, what do they assess and how is the result interpreted and given to the uh, analyzer. So, let us try to take a look. The machines that are used are Zenoster, this is used to test the light fastness of dyed fabric. The color fastness to light by Indian standard IS 24548 in the year 85 was first uh, introduced for the dyers so that a Zenoster machine can be used for ascertaining the light fastness of dyed fabric. Similarly, wash wheel is used particularly the mo model made by Thermolab. This is used to test the washing fastness of the dyed fabric. Color fastness to washing was ascertained by the Indian standard method 687 which was introduced in the year 79. IS 687-79 means it was introduced in the year 79 and the IS number is 687. IS stands for Indian standards. Similarly, we have ASTM standards which are the American test methods. We have DIN standards which are from Germany and so on. The perspirometer is used and the model that is popularly sold is uh, developed by Sasmira. This instrument is used for testing of perspiration fastness of the dyed fabric. The color fastness uh, to perspiration is evaluated by IS 971-83 by perspirometer and IS 973 was introduced in the year 1983. Croc meter, this is uh, a popular model was uh, marketed by Ravindra Engineering. This instrument is used for testing rubbing fastness of the dyed fabric. Color fastness to rubbing was ascertained by IS 76688 by Croc meter and which means that it was introduced in the year 88 and the IS Indian standard used for this uh, particular testing method is the IS 766. So, the, there are Indian standards available for testing all these four parameters that is light fastness, wash fastness, perspiration fastness and rubbing fastness. So, one has to just look for these ISs and follow the procedure and use the right machine for light fastness it is Zenoster, for finding out washing fastness it is wash wheel, 
for finding out perspiration fastness, it is perspirometer as the name suggests and for finding out the rubbing fastness, it is the crock meter. Now this is how the xenometer machine looks like and there is a source of light. For a certain period of time, the dyed fabric is actually in a closed uh, machine, it is uh, exposed to that light and usually it is you know a bright xenon arc light which is shown for 24 hours and the shade is ascertained before and after the exposure and the difference shows that whether this was affected by the light of the xenon lamp or not. So the name xeno, uh, xenoster or xenometer because xenon arc light is primarily used as a as a light source for uh, looking at the fading property of the dye. Evaluation of these fastness properties, evaluation of fastness properties of the dye is done by measuring washing, light, rubbing and perspiration fastness values using wash wheel, xenoster, croak meter and perspirometer respectively. Method for evaluating these properties are as as we all know that for washing fastness, wash wheel is used. But how is that procedure carried out? What is the methodology? Just the way I told you that for light fastness, the methodology is that a fabric piece is exposed to light for 24 hours and before exposure to the light, the uh, CLAB values are evaluated and then we will come to see C-lab values soon, but for the time being you just understand that the color of the fabric is ascertained with the help of a colored um, uh, spectrum or prism and this color uh, is then evaluated after the light exposure. So that is the shows and if there is any fading, it will show differences. Similarly, for ascertaining washing fastness, a 10 is to 4 centimeter swatch of the dyed fabric is taken and is sandwiched between two adjacent fabrics and stitched. The sample and the adjacent fabric were washed together. Five different types of washing are specified as different washing methods. The solution should be preheated to the required temperature of washing. The liquor ratio should be 1 is to 50. After soaping treatment, the specimen is removed, rinsed twice in cold water and then in cold running tap water, squeezed and dried in, uh, and uh, in air at a temperature not exceeding 60 degrees. The value is ev evaluated with the help of gray scales. So there is a scaling system and according to that scale, it ranges from 0 to 5. So that would give whether it is poor, very poor, good or very good or excellent. So these are the kind of gradation that the gray scale gives to a washed fabric and it is compared with the unwashed fabric. Obviously, when we are evaluating any fabric, one cannot do a fabric by its own. It has to be a comparative data of the unwashed and the washed and so the washing is done in a very systematic manner and the outcome of that washing has it deteriorated the colors of the fabric or has it uh, uh, remained uh, or allowed to remain the same can be evaluated and ascertained very accurately. This is the wash fastness tester machine. Just for your information, because these machine models you should be able to appreciate and understand and recognize. You should not say that this is a dyeing machine. No, this is actually a wash fastness tester machine. Now washing fastness, the color fastness of the textile material is determined by the way of mechanical hesitation of a specimen of textile with a piece of specified adjacent fabric in standard soap solution followed by rinsing and drying. 
Thereafter, the change in color of the specimen and stains on of the adjacent fabric are assessed with gray, the standard gray scale. So, there is a standard gray scale. The uh, adjacent fabric should not get any color from the dyed fabric. That is also a part that whether it is staining the adjacent cloth, it will only stain if the color is bleeding. If the color is running out, then the adjacent cloth. So, it is not just that simply the cloth, dyed cloth is uh, analyzed. It is kept with another fresh fabric, so that any color that would run off from the by the process of washing will come to the adjacent fabric. And so, color fastness for uh, or washing fastness is ascertained with the help of this particular methodology. Features of washing fastness tester, it is fabricated out of quality stainless steel. This morning also we were discussing about several, several dyeing machine and their models and all of them were made out of stainless steel. So, it goes to prove that dyeing should always be conducted under stainless steel, uh, you know, vessels or machines, not otherwise. Possess electric heater to he heat water in the water bath. The microprocessor based programmer is provided for temperature control, buzzer to indicate the completion of the process cycle or steps. As you know that washing fastness was done in 5 cycles and different times different kind of solutions of the soap of uh, different concentrations were added to the, uh, to the sample and the outcome was noted. So, there is a microprocessor, you will see that on the top there is a microprocessor which can be programmed and therefore, th th uh, the program that is fed on the microprocessor is actually fed and uh, then it follows the same and finally, when it is done, the buzzer indicates that there is a, com the process is complete. So, that is how it goes on. Fastness evaluation of light. After processing comparison in change in color of the specimen with the change that have occurred in the standard pattern under suitable illumination is carried out to determine the fastness of light. We have discussed this that in Zeno tester, what happens is that a sample before and a sample after the illumination are evaluated or are kept and then it, uh, the C lab values actually show whether any kind of fading has occurred or not. Now, let us try to look at the fastness to rubbing that is done by IS 766 in, and 88 is the number. The test is quite sensitive and for getting consistent result, it is necessary to use standard croque meter cloth, maintain uniform pressure for applying rubbing strokes and number of strokes. Because you see, we can just say when we were doing the indigo uh, lesson, the lesson on VAD dyes, I told you that sometimes some uh, indigoid dyes or VAD dyes have poor or not so good rubbing fastness. So, it is because it was kind of rubbed through the fingers and the color ran into the fingers. Now, that shows that it has poor rubbing fastness. Similarly, when one is evaluating the uh, rubbing fastness, this croak meter must have everything very well defined. How many strokes of rubbing will occur? number of strokes and what is the kind of pressure that the strokes will be applying and so on and so forth. Besides, rubbing fastness is a certain for wet cloth as well as for dry cloth. So, that may vary, the values may vary and uh, for rubbing fastness percentage of moisture on the croak cloth has to be kept uniform in or at a uniform level. So, several test methods like AAT, CC methods are also known, but we follow the IS method and in that wet pickup to be maintained between 65 plus minus 5 percent by squeezing the wet croak meter cloth using the AAT, CC blotting paper. Any variation in the moisture content 
can lead to deviation in the rating. With high amount of moisture, wet pickup ratings will be lower. Degree of staining is usually assessed using gray scale. So, this there is a gray scale or a scale which is named as gray scale and I told you it ranges from 0 to 5. We will see what it all signifies and thus the rating is done between that. If it is completely like gray scale for change of color with grade 0 to 5 where rating 5 signifies negligible change and the rating 1 or 0 shows maximum change is what is the full range of the gray scale. Now, this is how the croque meter looks like is used for testing the transference of color from the surface of one material to another by either wet or dry rubbing method. Fastness to perspiration, fastness to perspiration, the fastness to perspiration is ascertained by the fact that the with reference to alkaline and acidic perspiration it is evaluated. So, it could be if the perspiration is acidic or alkaline how would the dye fare? So, for alkaline the pH is maintained at 8 and for acidic it is the pH is kept at 5.5. Liqueurs were prepared and the composite specimens were dipped in acidic and alkaline solutions separately for 30 minutes. Good and uniform penetration of the solution was ensured. The liqueur was poured off and the excess water and air bubbles if any were removed by passing the specimen in between two glass rods. Composite specimens were then placed between glass or acrylic plates with a pressure of 12 kPa perspirometer. The perspirometer was kept for 4 hours at a temperature 37 degrees plus minus 2 degrees. Afterwards, the fabrics were removed, separated and dried in air below 60 degrees. The values were rated as per the gray scale. So, you see that the procedural detail of assess assessment of these fastness properties are told to you and you also now know that they are analyzed on different machines and there is something called a gray scale which ranges from 0 to 5 or 1 to 5 where 5 shows negligible change which means it is a very excellent dye, 4 shows slight change which means it is a good dye, 3 shows noticeable change which is fairly good, but it cannot be said that it is very good and therefore, there are some changes where we can see that the dyed fabric has shown considerable changes and the th Next one is considerably changed that means a lot of dye has run off through perspiration which will mean that it will be having a rating of 2 and when it changes to a large extent then it is much changed and it is considered very poor and that will be rated as 1. So, this is the kind of gray scale which exists and this ascertains it gives it does not give an absolute value, but it gives a relative value as to how it has changed from its original specimen. This is how the perspirometer looks like and because it is compressed and uh, the, the, this is the model that shows the entire setup. Now, coming to I was saying that there is a color change. How do we find out that the color has changed? Of course, we have a visual way of ascertaining that this is light blue, this is dark blue, this is pink, this is red, but that is not all. You can think that this is light blue, I can think it is medium blue. So, it is not what we think uh, and we can think differently. It is the way in world over there is a way of describing a color and that is done by the help of C lab value. As we go along we will get into the understanding of the C lab. Color models are used to classify colors 
and to qualify them according to such attributes as hue, saturation, chroma, lightness or brightness. They are further used for matching colors and are valuable resources for anyone working with color in any medium. C lab, S I E L A B, uses Cartesian, Cartesian coordinates to calculate a color in a color space. So, there is a way of putting the nomenclature of a color so that light, dark, uh, you know, our own assessment of a color does not come into the picture. A color is described by L, A, B values and the, the process or the fundamental is based on C lab, S I E L A B. The C I E color model are highly influential system for measuring color and distinguishing between colors. So, that is the reason why there was a necessity to have a universal or a global way of describing a color. So, anybody in the in America or Europe or India or any place in the world will describe a color by its LAB value only. The A axis runs from left to right, a color measurement movement in the plus A direction depicts a shift towards red. Along the B axis, B movement represents a shift towards yellow. The center L axis shows the L0 as black or total absorption at the bottom. At the center of this plane is neutral or gray. So, you see that that is how the color was described and it was very, very easy to then put any color, any shade, any hue into this coordinates. So, you have three coordinates L, A and B and all of them are taking or participating in one color or the other. So, it is the combination of this L, A, B which actually describes any shade. An organization called CIE that is Commission Internationale de LRJ determined which is a French company determined stand, standard values that are used worldwide to measure color. So, that is why there was a necessity to have a color system so that you know the description does not become uh, difficult and does not become different. The, measure, the values used by CIE are called L star A star B star. You will always find that L is capital, it has an asterisk, A has is small alphabet A, it has an asterisk and B is a small alphabet with an asterisk. That is how it is written and the color measurement method is called C lab value. So, that is why it is possible to ascertain the C lab value before the light sh is shown and in a Zeno tester and after the light is shown. L represents the difference between light where L uh, star is equal to 100 and dark when L star is 0. A represents the difference between green and red and B represents the difference between yellow and blue. Using this system, any color corresponds to a place on the graph shown in the figure in the next slide. Variables of A star, B star, L star or E are represented by delta L, delta A and delta B and therefore, one can find out what is the change. Delta means any change from the initial situation. If the L has changed, how much of the L has changed and that change will be represented by the delta L. So, it represents the magnitude of difference in color, but does not indicate the direction of the color difference. So, it only says from what L value what has reduced. We will come to the slides and then you will have a better understanding. 
See, this is what the C lab coordinate system is all about. L is on the one axis 0 to 100 and then you have plus A to minus A and you have plus B to uh, minus B and you will see that plus A is red and it is going towards minus A when it becomes green. So, that is how the values are written. It is not only the numerical value for A and B, it is also whether it is more towards green then it will have a minus value. If it A has a plus value then it is more towards red. Similarly, if you look at B, the plus B values are the yellows and the minus B value proceed towards the blues and the purple. So, this is how the color is described and you will see that L when it is 100 it is white and then proceeds towards middle as gray and when uh, L is 0 it is completely dark or black. So, this describes any color, any dye, any dyed fabric in a very efficient manner. Color characteristics, at present the combination of laboratory dyeing and the C lab coordinates was found to be suitable to establish an experimental basis for standardization of plant material. Now, similarly, when we understood that C labs describe a color, it was also extended to natural dyes. C lab colorimetric system was used to determine the color measurements on fabric that is the dyed fabric. Coloration was determined using a color scan machine and in our case we use premier color scan. I will show you how the machine looks like. Color difference photometer which recorded the spectrum of reflected light and converted it to a set of color coordinates that is L A B values. With the help of color scan machine, C lab values can be evaluated through reflectance. So, it totally is a phenomena of reflectance. When a light is shown, what is reflected? The color coordinates are L, whether the sample is light or dark, that is L is, if it is 0, I told you it is black, if L is 100, it is white. So, the lower the value of L, the darker will be the shade. The higher the value of L, the lighter will be the shade. Similarly, if the sample is red or green that is it will be plus A to minus A, minus A shows greenness and plus A shows redness. Similarly, B star if the sample is yellow plus yellow will, uh, will be you know more yellow and blue will be minus B and therefore, the yellowness is uh, kind of described by plus B values. These are numerical values I have told you. This is how the color scan machine looks like and then we go on to understand more about C lab. Because you see now you can appreciate that any color, any dye, any dyed fabric, any extract from the uh, plant material, any synthetic dye will all go through this C lab value system in order to be described as a colorant. In the C lab system, a color is represented by three numbers which specify its position in the three dimensional volume. The first number of the L value defines how light or dark the color is. We just saw that and the A and the B tell us about the color. Because color are specified in terms of numbers, it is easy to go one step further and describe the difference between two colors with a numerical value. That is why it is possible to do the Zeno testing, that is the light testing. Why? Because you know if an, a, a fabric has a number of 53.239 as the starting sample and after showing the light, if the, it has faded, then it will become lower value of, uh, uh, sorry, the higher value and it will become 50, uh, it will leave 50s and it will become 60 or 64 
And this difference from 59 to 64 promotes it to become uh, lighter in shade. So that is how it is possible to numerically ascertain two colors. The difference expressed as a number of difference between the two C, two C, C lab numbers and that is referred as E delta, delta E or delta or E delta. The most sophisticated color measurement instrument is a photometer. A photometer measures the spectrum of the sample reporting the reflectance or transmittance at regular intervals. The spectrum is the most complete description of a color and it can be used to calculate all other matrix including density and C lab. So you see that C lab value gives us a complete picture of comparative data of the dye, of the dyed fabric and whether the dye has run off or it has got washed off or it has got a perspiration fastness or not or whether alkaline and uh, acidic solutions have made any uh, difference to the dyed fabric or not. All that can be ascertained with the help of C lab values. Now when we try to evaluate the main three values are L, A and B. After dyeing, color strength and fastness studies were carried out to have an idea about the dye uptake on the fabric. For color specification, the CIE lab CIE system is used. The basis of all color measurement work is the CIE system of color specification introduced in the year 1931. So it was only in after 1931 by the Commission of International D L R L Col L Col R J that this color was able to be described. The X, Y and Z tri stimulus values specify a color viewed by the CIE standard observer which is depicted as L prime or L star, A star and B values by C lab equation. The L, A, B values form the three perpendicular axes of the color space. In this work, the C lab values have been measured by premier color scan machine and we will try to see that this is like a entire, you know, uh, globular color spectrum of which there are three axes and all the three of them are occupying different axes that is the L, the A and the B. Measurements of color strength, even with this color uh, scanning machine, one can make the color strength measurement by utilizing a formula that was given by Kubelka and Monk. The equation is that K by S is equal to 1 minus R square upon 2 R. Now you see the color yield of both the dyed and the mordanted samples can be evaluated by light reflectance measurement using premier color scan. The same machine which finds out the LAB value can also give us the K by S value. The color strength was assessed using Kubelka Monk equation and I told you the equation K by S is equal to 1 minus R square upon 2 R where R K is the sorption coefficient, R is the reflectance of the dyed fabric and S is the scattering coefficient. So through this equation mathematically also the color strength of the fabric can be ascertained and it is the color depth or the color strength which determines how much color has been taken up by the fabric. The C lab values were determined for all the samples investigated and we came to a conclusion that you know this is like giving a full spectrum of information about a dyed fabric. So not only does it tell us the color shade but also the color strength, 
the delta E value if required because when we are mordenting. Then from the control sample, how much is the difference if alum is mordented and dyed or if ferrous sulphate is mordented and dyed, does it make any changes in the LAB value? Certainly it makes, but at the same time is the color strength larger or smaller or equal can also be ascertained. Now when we try to look at this kind of change in K by S values for different mordants, say for a cotton sample of a given sample, you will see that there are different graphs of different uh, uh, mordant. One is control which is unmordanted. Then the pink line is with alum, the yellow line is when the fabric is only having tannic acid, the third line is when it has tannic acid and copper sulphate, the fourth line is ferrous sulphate and tannic acid and so on and so forth. And you will see standard tannic, all the mordants have been tried out with this particular dye and you will see that the longest line is the control. Why? Because it is showing that it has take up, taken up color, but it is not the strongest color strength. Why? Because it will run off. It is only the superficial color. So if we have to evaluate among the alum, tannic acid, copper sulphate, ferrous sulphate, potassium sulphate, um, potassium dichromate and uh, stannous sulphate and stannic chloride, we will find that the best values are obtained with ferrous sulphate. Why? Because it shows the lowest line in the graph and after that the order of reactivity is that ferrous is larger than chromium which is larger than copper which is much 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 larger than aluminium which is larger than stannic and which is larger than stannous. So for cotton samples this is how the change in color strength is can be ascertained with the help of a modern. Similarly, modenting, how, whether it makes any difference to a dye or not can be also ascertained with the help of the uh, K by S value, the color strength value. And in the case of silk, the same exercise was carried out by taking, because here no tannic acid is used, control alum, copper sulphate, ferrous sulphate, potassium dichromate, stannous chloride, stannic chloride, all these mordants were applied and it was found that the best value was obtained for the, uh, the changes in the silk samples show that the best value was for chromium. And then further on it goes on to show that the other mordants had its own color strength effectivity. So you see that K by S can also be analyzed on the C lab machine that is the premier color machine or color scanning machine and similarly the color strength can be also uh, found out by that C lab values give the dye description and color strength gives the dye depth.